Hello, this is Dwayne Walton. I'm the executive director of the Parks Point Youth Center, and I'm happy to give an update on how things are progressing, given the situation that we all find ourselves in. Before I get there, I want to talk about our summer outreach, which was an incredible success. Our goal for the summer was to ensure that we're meeting the needs of families. And one of the needs that came up is just food insecurity. Because of COVID-19, everything has become complicated. And some of our families, the parents have lost jobs. And so we want to ensure that we can provide enough groceries to last a family about a week. And I think based on our numbers, we were able to meet the needs of about 65 individual families. And so our staff and volunteers came together weekly to purchase foods and to pack them and distribute them. We went into communities to distribute the food, but we wanted to do more than just that. And so we had our staff and volunteers and some of our summer interns pray with parents knowing that they're going through a whole lot. And just the COVID-19 uh, stress and all that's related to that have brought a dimmer on a lot of people. Um, however, we know the power of prayer. And so we're able to pray with them. We're able to engage the kids with activities and also Bible studies. So from the onset, we wanted to ensure that we can continue our work, even though we had to rapidly change the way we did it to ensure that families are actually being helped and supported. But now we're transitioning. School is back and parents are faced with the obstacle of providing school at home. Most of our students have to do online schooling until schools are able to get them back. So one of the challenges we found is that some parents can't be home to supervise their students. They have to work. Others don't have the access to the internet that would actually provide enough bandwidth for multiple students doing school at the same time. Even some are living in communities and areas where they don't have access to high-speed internet and the school has to provide um, some hotspots for them. And sometimes those fail, especially when uh, the internet is being pulled a lot. And so we decided, why don't we become an access point for those families? A place where the kids can come and get the highest speed internet in small groups that are supervised by our staff and our, and our interns. Nancy Sykes devised a program. Bud Herman uh, worked hard to pre uh, prepare the facility and also to ensure that every portion of our buildings have Wi-Fi that's fast enough to meet the needs of the students. And Sanjay Rowe went through the list of students to ensure that we can get the ones here that need it most. And so we've started our access point. Right now, we're limited to 35 students because of the COVID-19 restrictions. However, the way the program is developed, we can scale that up. And in a moment's time, we can go to 70 students as long as we can meet the restrictions set by the CDC and the uh, Chester County Health uh, Department. And so for now, we will work with 35. But as long as those restrictions start to be peeled back, we can move up to help more and more students. So what does Access Point do? Well, first of all, it makes sure the students are able to get online with fast enough internet so there's no disruption during the day. Two, it provides supervision. It's hard for a kid to stay in front of a computer for hours on to get their work done, especially if there's no supervision. Well, we have supervisors. We've hired more staff, more young adults, college students, who they themselves didn't go back to school because of COVID-19. And they're doing work online too, but they can be supervisors for our younger students. We also are providing socialization. Uh, these kids have been locked away at home for months now, and they need to get out, but they need to get out in a safe environment. But Herman has put together a reopening plan that ensures the safety of the youth, the staff, the volunteers, and our interns. We're excited to have the kids back, and we're excited to see how the point can provide a need that the community has. See, we have to be flexible during this time, and we need to be able to meet the needs, whatever they are, in ways that are impactful. Not only are we providing an access point for internet, the students are also able to have activities. Of course, we'll serve them lunch, and breakfast where that's needed. But what's most uh, exciting for us as staff is that we continue to share God's word. Parents were informed and they signed up for the fact that there'll be devotions during the, at the end of the day. Before the kids go home, they'll have a 30 minute time of devotions going through the Bible to get a better understanding of who Jesus is. This is important to us. In a time like this, families need hope. And we know hope is found in nothing else than Jesus Christ. And so we, we are happy to, to provide that 
resource. Um, so again, we've always been about addressing the spiritual, physical, emotional, and academic needs. And though we can't do it like we normally did it um, because of our great staff and their, their fast thinking and their dedication to these kids, we we're able to be flexible with our programs to address this need. Our program as it's set right now is again, scalable. So when the school uh, goes back, even though some students may opt to stay at home, we can still function this way. Also, things will change abruptly. The way it's been, schools can go back um, and then in a few months, they have to send the kids back home again because of COVID-19. We hope that doesn't happen, but in the event that it does, we're actually prepared more than we've ever been to be able to meet those needs. As you can imagine, the last few months have been challenging. It's also been tough. We had to find new ways to do things to impact our families, uh, which meant that we had to spend money where, where we never spent before. It's important to us to be flexible, but that flexibility is impossible without the support of our community. You've been alongside us at the very day things changed. You've been very generous and supportive. Your prayers have been felt and have impacted us as staff, but also our community. Your donations have come at a very important time. And again, it allowed us to be flexible to do what we're doing. Of course, we had to hire new, new staff to be able to meet this new need. Before kids can come to the point and we could have worked um, with 10 kids, 15 kids, 80 kids uh, with a limited amount of staff. Now, because of social distancing, we had to get more staff for small groups of students. Um, I think we all can appreciate that, but it also gives us more opportunities. Small groups are really important in terms of growing the students and cultivating them. And so this new model of operating is something that we want to stick to. The more young adults we can have on site working with the kids is the more lasting impact we can have. And the only way that's going to be made possible is your, your support. Keep listening out. Uh, in a few uh, weeks, we'll start talking about our, our uh, fall fundraiser. It's going to be online, so it's going to be a new way of doing things. And, and uh, I think it's going to be exciting. And we have some surprises for that event. And we want you to be a part of it. So in a few weeks, you'll start seeing things on Facebook. Many of you will be getting uh, emails and, uh, and mails directly to talk about how you can be a part of our online fundraiser. Um, we got to get through this year and we got to get through this year healthy um, to ensure that we can continue to serve in 2021. And again, we thank you so much for your support, sticking with us and making our summer outreach possible, making Access Point possible and whatever else we'll need to do to address the needs of our family. You have a wonderful day and a happy fall. Thank you.